I, I thank the gentleman. I know the hour is late. We're heading toward the witching hour, so I'll try to put some remarks in a very succinct fashion. First, I'd like to point out some of the principles which undergird our position in support of the Honduran people. One is that we as Americans understand our self-evident right to liberty is from God, not the government, and no tyrant or terrorist can interfere with it. We also understand that Americans, our security is from strength, not surrender, and that our greatest strength is the expansion of liberty to others to ensure freedom for ourselves. What we also understand is painfully evident with Honduras. The United States and all free people are targets of tyrants and terrorists, not because of our actions, but because of our existence. The existence of free people, the rule of law, the pursuit of one's happiness in accordance with one's inalienable rights is a threat to all tyrants and despots throughout the world, for their thrones are unstable in the presence of free people and oppressed people who are inspired by such examples. With the Honduras situation, we see crystal clear that the United States in many ways in our foreign affairs has gotten away from these fundamental principles and concepts. And the danger, not only to our allies like Honduras, is great. I pose one example. Can this administration, for the edification of individuals like myself who may not grasp the intricacies and the genius of their foreign policy, explain one thing? What is the difference between women being shot in the streets of Iran for trying to be free and the difference between a constitutional democracy in Honduras following the rule of law to protect itself from a would-be tyrant? This administration said these situations are distinguishable because in the instance of the Iranians' murderous regime, that is an internal affair for the Iranian people. And yet when the free people of Honduras, through the rule of law in defense of their constitutional democracy, exercise their means of self-defense, we are told that that is of the utmost interest to the United States and we must demand an outcome in accordance with our will and the will of the OIS, which now includes Mr. Fidel Castro, no fan of elections. Can you tell me why the freedom of the Iranian people is to be left in the hands of their murderers? and why the freedom of the Honduran people is to be taken from theirs and put in the hands of butchers like Fidel Castro and others, such as Chavez. I eagerly await a response, although I don't know now that I will find it edifying, let alone satisfactory. I yield back.